our next speaker we're happy to have is Dennis Frey and um, you're going to get a slight change in uh, emphasis now because we, you, you probably heard from some of the technical guys and the researchers now we're going to hear about the, the, uh, the farmer's perspective something that we you know we can't, obviously can't ignore from Dennis. All right, so my name is Dennis Frame. I'm a UW Extension person. I was a county agent for 18 years. I've been director of Discovery Farms for the last 12 years. Uh, the ag community looks at me as a researcher, extension outreacher, and the university committee looks at me as a person who only works in agriculture. So I'm absolutely in two camps at all times. The other one's always thinking I'm in the opposite camp. I do probably 80 producer meetings a year. I spend most of my time uh, I've tried to spend a lot of my time on farms, working with farms on stuff, so that's kind of what I do. And, I, and it's an honor for me to represent the producer's perspective, considering we have a, a Wisconsin producer here. But I'll try to tell you what I hear from the industry, what we're hearing in our watersheds, and what's going on. And the reason I started with this slide is that in Wisconsin, we've got a new adaptive management program where we're... We're trying to say we can do with non-point exactly what we're doing with point. We're doing the adaptive management. We're doing trading. We know all these wonderful things. And so you're going to hear uh, the perspective, at least the Wisconsin perspective, from what I hear from farmers saying. Um, the P-Index is a management tool. Uh, this is what it actually says on our state website. It is a nutrient management planning tool. It is also used to target and assess uh, the tool for water quality projects. What's my opinion of that? I think it's an excellent tool to evaluate relative risks of fields or management practices against other fields or management practices. So if I'm on Joe Bragger's farm or any of the farms in my watershed or any of the farmers that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, this tool does a very, very good job of let me, letting me say, these are your high-risk fields, these are your high-risk management practices, these are things we could look to modify. And I, that's realistically, as a guy who does a lot of on-farm work and consulting, that's what I'd really like to see this tool. What I see in my state is I question the value of using this uh, tool on one farm versus another. So I've been told that a, two, a P index of two on Joe's is the same as a P index of two in Janesville. So I've got one to two percent slope here. I've got 12, 16 percent slope here. They're both twos, but they mean exactly the same thing, which is they're losing two pounds of phosphorus to the stream, and therefore this is your relative risk. Okay? I am never comfortable in our watersheds when I have 30 or 40 guys in the room saying, "Everybody with a a, a 10, raise your hand. We're going to work with all of you," or everyone with a nine. We work individual farm on individual farms, comparing fields to fields, management to management, and I think. Andrew, I'm not the guy who wrote it, but as I work with it in the field, my comfort level there is really high. Comparing farm to farm, management to management, always makes me a little less comfortable uh, in terms of what I'm seeing. That's the management side, and I really like the P-Index for that, but that's not what the P-Index is in Wisconsin. So forget the management, because it's a regulatory tool. And you could say it's not, but the fact of the matter is it's codified into state law, and our law reads, Croplands, pastures, and winter grazing areas shall have an average p-index of 6 or less over the accounting period, and it may not exceed a p-index of 12, period. Okay? Now, we've got a, now we don't have a management tool. Now we have a tool with guidelines that you have to hit or you're out of compliance. You write your nutrient management plan on our state-approved software, which is only one program that you can use. And if you exceed this or you exceed soil test levels or you exceed nitrogen rates, you get a red flag. You get a red flag, you can't turn in your plan, so now you're planning to get rid of red flags. And I don't know how many of you do a lot of nutrient management planning, but <clears throat> there's the time of writing the plan to get the producers to change management and adoption, and there's the time to writing a plan to get, make sure you've got no red flags. And so we see a lot of people doing manipulation in fields on paper to get rid of the red flags and never going back to the farmer and saying, can you do this? Okay, I just got done with a plan on my desk that has seven different manure application rates and they range about three to four tons, okay? So what's the difference between 2.3 tons, 2.4 tons, and 2.9 tons? Do you know what? In real life, there's like a heavy application and a light application. And I don't think, and, and I don't know how good you guys are, but in dairy manure, we don't use point tons. I'm just trying to get them in the ballpark. Um, it is an excellent regulatory tool. What I've seen with RP in this is it allows people with little background in farming to calculate whether a farm is losing phosphorus at unacceptable levels. You don't have to understand anything about agriculture because the model gives you that number. And you can make management recommendations based on the model. You don't need to visit the farms. You don't have to talk to the farmer and you don't have to have experience. 
I had a farmer that I've worked with 20 years this year, got his plan rewritten nine times because it didn't meet the model. I've been on that farm, his consultant's been on that farm, he's never had a complaint in his life, and it was totally driven by the model. The guys refused to accept it. I said, would you come out and talk to the guy? Would you walk his land? Would you see what he's doing? Nope, it's a waste of my time. I don't need to drive to the farm from Madison. I already know everything he's doing. That worries me because I spend a lot of time on farms, and I think we cannot forget that sometimes you need to be in the field and see what's happening. Um, it calculates impacts from changes in management. It can be done in an office with little or no involvement. Actually, the nutrient management plan that's on my desk right now is for a CAFO, so it's a permitted operation in Wisconsin. The farmer never saw the plan, and it was submitted to the government. No, I'm not going to take questions right now, Joe. So anyway, <laughs> just shut up and let me get through this. <laughs> it was submitted to the government as his plan. He never read it. And when I explained to him that you have now have a contract with the state that says you're going to do this. He was like, I didn't promise to do this, and it doesn't matter because it's his plan. That makes me a little concerned, and if we don't like the results, we can change the criteria. What do I mean by that? And Andrew, I don't know if this is really what you wrote the indices to do, but this is, is how we see it in the field. So RP index, uh, we had a meeting in Madison. We had the, the phosphorus meeting there, Andrew. I don't remember how many years ago that was. You were moderating a section. I was in the crowd of scientists. You asked the question, would we ever drop the number from six to a lower number? And I raised my hand and I said, there's already discussions of doing that. And a scientist from Wisconsin got up and just ripped me and said, you don't understand the model. You don't understand the data. Six is the right number. It will never change. And there was no reason to argue because I live in a policy world and I live in a farm world. So I already knew that we were talking about changing it. So I let, I didn't care looking like an idiot. This is wording uh, from a proposal in one county in our state of the last two weeks that says starting in 2014, you already saw our law is six, 50% of the crop acres used by participating farms must meet a P index of four or less throughout the rotation. Any farms that join in that are non-emergency farms will be giving five years to go from a six to a four, okay? That may not seem like a big deal if you haven't run our index and realizing how many changes you have to make in rotation and management and soil tests and application rates. But going from a six to a four is, a num is fairly important in terms of actually being able to do it. So when I say we have numbers that are in place, that's great. But the nice thing about the index is if you're not happy with the six, you just dial it to a four. In two years, if you're not happy with a four, you dial it to a three. In five years, if the three isn't doing it, you dial it to a two, okay? That makes me a little bit nervous. So my first question for the science community is, is there any actual data that shows that reducing a P index from a six to four reduces the annual loss and that the total phosphorus loss has been measured in a water body? That's what my farmers ask me. So we have two things. They say, if you want me to meet the paper plan, I got no problem. I can meet the paper plan. But do you ever want to see this show up in water? I don't really, that's the question to me. My job is more about what actually happens to water quality, trying to keep farms profitable and see if we can protect water quality than whether we can make these models work. And it's not a criticism of the model because we're starting to see this number change all the time. So I'm going to give you an example from a watershed we're working in northwest Wisconsin. We have four in-stream monitoring stations from four small basins. We actually have a project in this watershed right here with the producers. Here's the actual in-stream phosphorus losses for uh, 2011 and 2012. So this is our watershed right here. This is how many pounds of phosphorus per acre were actually in this stream. It's a pretty big stream. So this is an agricultural watershed. The northern part of this watershed is primarily 40 acre homes and, and mostly wildlife areas. So you're looking at what I would call, these two would be the ag watersheds and this would be the non-ag watersheds. And then this is the culmination right towards the end of this outlet. You can see if you look over this period of time, I don't know how you want to average that number out, but if you say we're losing somewhere between 0.2 and 0.25 pounds of phosphorus in stream, that's our number. Now this is a TMDL watershed. We're doing the project there to see if we can achieve the TMDL numbers and we're doing a lot of producer educations and have a lot of uh, actually pretty strong uh, support. Of this total watershed, and remember here, our watershed is about 17,792 acres. We've got nutrient management plans on 17,522. I don't think that's too bad. 
Okay, that's how many people are, that's how many acres voluntarily came in and talked to us. Of those nutrient management acres, 95% of that land has a soil test less than 50. That's important because part of this TMDL, our agency people would like to see toil, soil tests less than 30 parts per million Bray 1. The agronomy agriculture community is a little worried about that number in terms of long-term economics. Okay, so number one, in our ballpark, we'd say, wow, we're doing pretty good on soil tests. 11,000 acres or 63% of the land already has a PI of one or two. Another 25% between three and four. And we have 2,000 acres of a five or greater. So as a model person, that's your target, right? The five or greater, two years of edge of field data. This is the big piece. We've done work in this watershed. We looked at the TMDL, and this is one of those watersheds, Andrew, you talked in your talk about this side of the hill ran this way because of a confining layer, and this side ran this way. Everything east of 63 is where all of our runoff is. It is extremely heavy soils, extremely heavy clays, sediment loss is unbelievable, PIs are low. West of 63, we can't get runoff. It's a sandier soil, it's phenomenal management, there's irrigation over there but the PIs are high. So Tim was looking at this and he, he looked at me and he goes, no, that's gotta be backwards. And I'm like, that's the cool part. It makes you go, that can't be right because that's not what our field data says, but that's what the model says. So number one, that's a concern. We in our education program and what we're doing with our outreach program are really saying we've gotta concentrate our efforts on the other side of 63 if we really wanna see water quality improve. So we had a meeting up there with farmers, uh, three or four weeks ago, yeah, probably four weeks ago now, we got a bunch of producers in the room. We had the morning session, we had the afternoon come in. This is a new DNR priority watershed. Uh, we told them all of our data, went through it all and said, here's what we're doing, here's what, we're, here's what we see. We showed them the data from our edge of field stuff and our stream stuff. And we said, this is now a, a targeted watershed. There's a TMDL, uh, DNR is coming in here and they're looking at an adaptive management program. And the county people came in and they said, in order to reach the TMDL, we've got to reduce phosphorus losses by a quarter of a pound per acre. This is not a big deal, okay? And the comment was, if you can decrease your P index by a quarter of a pound per acre, we will achieve our TMDL and it'll show up in the stream. Which when you think about it, if you're a farmer and you know your P index is five or maybe four or maybe three, dropping that from a three to a 2.75, that's not a big deal. But most of our guys had been in the morning talk and they said, what were the numbers that we were losing right now? So we're sitting in this watershed. We said, well, all you gotta do is drop it a quarter of a pound per acre and we'll be at goal. So Andrew is the best phosphorus guy I know and I've only done this for 12 years but I've never seen a zero. I mean, these numbers coming from Joe's Woodlands between 0.25 and 0.3 on non-farm land, that's a pretty good number for us long-term. So to reduce it, we've got to have significantly high losses. Now you need to know these two years of data are not necessarily drought years, but we haven't had huge runoff events. We haven't had any huge major mistakes. But when we start talking about changing it in the stream a quarter of a pound, our farmers needed to know what they meant, particularly because this now, Andrew, is being used as a contract. You sign a contract in adaptive management with a point source that you're going to reduce this. That's a big deal. And I, I don't really understand how that's going to be worked at yet. <laughs> so from a producer's perspective, the P index may be the greatest tool ever designed if the agencies are held accountable that the recommendations given to farmers will allow them, number one, to remain profitable and that water quality will improve. My farmers tell me I will hit whatever number you give me, but quit changing the game every two to three years you better know that if I hit this number, it actually means something. And I don't know if we know that it means something yet. I don't know if the stream water is actually gonna improve, which we're looking at the end game. If you do know that, then I think agriculture will be pretty excited about this. If water quality doesn't improve, the index numbers cannot be adjusted until there's sound science which proves that achieving the new goal will improve the water quality. Now that, for those of you in agencies, you're thinking this isn't fair, but if you're a farmer and you signed a contract that says you're gonna hit, or your state law says you've gotta hit six, and you've designed your whole farming system around that, and then the state says, well, let's make it five. Well, let's make it four. Well, let's make it three. 
and you have a small farm, so you're only running a couple million dollar operation, or you have some of our biggest farms, uh, our biggest farm last year invested $280 million to be built, you'd kind of like to know that the rules are going to be somewhat consistent. And so there's real concern in our state now that we have a regulatory tool with a number, and there's no guarantee that that number's not going to change. And my concern, Andrew, and, 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 and Peter, you guys know this, will dropping these numbers actually show up in water? And the bigger question that we're trying to answer through our watershed program is how long will it take? How do we take care of the legacy? How do we take care of the non-farm areas? And how do we build all of this stuff in? Um, the evaluation of improvement is based on the model and not water quality. I think that's the number one thing I hear farmers say. If you will pay me to drop my P index from a three to a 2.75 and you don't care what happens in the water, I love it. If you pay me to go from a three to a two on paper, I love it. Uh, we've got some really, really good crop consultants. Give me the number and we'll hit it, okay? Will we implement it? Mm, yeah, I don't know. Can we really do it? But we can do it on paper. And so this is the difference between paper planning and real planning. And uh, I was talking to Peter a little bit about this before. One of the things that we've seen in Wisconsin on all the farms is that I do also a ton of financial accounting. I do a lot of cash flow work. We write two sets of financial papers. We write the papers we turn into the government to pay taxes on, and we write the papers that really show how much profit the farm's making. Is that true, Joe? Yeah, I know. You don't want to show that you're highly profitable to the government because of income tax, but you better know whether you're profitable if you're managing the farm. We are currently doing that in our state with nutrient management. We are writing awesome plants to be turned into the state that says we are totally in compliance. And then we are sitting down with the farm managers. Am I doing something wrong? We're sitting down with the farm managers. I got it. The farm managers and saying, okay, what do you really do? What can you do? How can you manage? And frankly, I think that's probably the worst thing is how do you figure out which plan is real? Okay. And ultimately I'd like to get away from that. I'd like one plan versus not another plan. So this is my, my uh, last slide. This is only one farm. Yes, I could share with you a whole bunch of farms. All the data is pretty much the same, and we're actually writing a paper on that. But this is a farm from uh, uh, southeast Wisconsin. The numbers on your left are the P-index numbers that were calculated uh, using the P-index, using all the information on the farm. The numbers on the right were the actual measured loss through our flumes for the whole year. So you can see in 06, the index predicted 6.4. We actually had a 1.6, 7.13, 0.34, and an 8.56, and in, uh, we actually lost 6.3. And you go, wow, it was really pretty close, except for that one year it was actually higher. This is the only farm I've ever seen that was higher. And the only thing I got to tell you is that you got to remember down below, we had a 7.5 inch rain that flooded and shut down the interstate in Wisconsin for four days. 4.4 pounds of the actual loss was delivered in that storm. And a seven and a half inch storm is much bigger than the design criteria. It's much bigger than the 25 year, 24 hour, it's over 100. You back that storm out of there and go to a normal year, we'd be down. Every farm that we have evaluated, our P-Index always overestimates, and it's designed to overestimate. But when you write rules and regulations that say these numbers are actual, or in a watershed, you start to manipulate. If you drop it a half a pound, if you drop it a quarter of a pound, if you drop it a pound, these numbers have to be a little bit tighter. So in agriculture, uh, we now have another watershed in the southern part of our state where they want all farmers to sign contracts that they will decrease soil test loss by one pound per acre. In the stream, it'll show up within five years based on the P index. To me, to the guys that I work with, it, their whole lives depend on this, their whole income depends on this, their family, and for a lot of them, places that they've lived on their whole lives and their families have been involved with, this is a big deal. So that would be my concern, is that the P-Index, people like it as a management tool. I think most people love it as a management tool. People are trying to figure out how to deal with it as a regulatory tool. And we're really concerned in our state is, are these numbers as accurate as everybody says they are? Because you're basing people whose livelihoods depend on that. So I'm not against it. I'm not for it. I just actually want to see farms profitable, and I want to see us maintain and improve water quality.